So we're going to start the National 5 Trigonometry Skills Unit and the very first part of this is learning how to calculate the area of a known right angled triangle. We will be looking for you to be able to select the correct information and substitute the correct values into the formula for calculating the area of a known right angled triangle. This formula is given in the formula list. The skills we will be using in order to do this will be your thinking skills. We'll need you to be organised with your, your work. This has got um, been a lot of this trigonometry work has got practical applications and quite often you will need to use some communication skills when we do this. There are lots of jobs for careers where um, you will be, or where trigonometry is required, a lot of engineering skills in particular, uh, engineering jobs rather, um, would use trigonometry skills. So, I'm going to have a little look. First of all, it's important that we know how to name sides in a known right angled triangle. You've met this um, with right angled triangles, we've spoken about the hypotenuse, the opposite side and the adjacent, but we can no longer do that when it's non right angled. We no longer have a hypotenuse or an opposite or adjacent uh, side in the same way that we had before. So what we do this time is that our triangles, we use capital letters quite often to name the corner points. And when we're naming sides, we would use two capital letters, whatever capital letters are either end. It actually doesn't matter which way round you talk about. So this length here, for example, is AB, or we could say that's the same as BA. could switch the letters round. There's no comma or anything between them. They're just grouped together so that we know that we're talking about uh, this side. Yeah. Right, this is our side AB. So side BC, obviously this one here, and then the side AC. So that's one way to name your sides is to use capital letters. Alternatively, we can also use a single lowercase letter to name a side. Now the way this works is the side opposite to the capital letter. So opposite to side, if we've got capital A at one corner, the opposite side gets the lowercase letter of A. So you could name this side using capital letters BC or we can also use the, the little letter A and then consequently opposite angle B you've got lowercase letter B and opposite C lowercase letter C. So the lowercase letters are what appears and you're going to meet a lot of trig um, formulae that we will be using and it's these lowercase letters that are used to refer to the side. So here's the first formula that we come across and that's the one for area of a triangle. And the area of a triangle is given as a half AB sine C. So if we have this triangle here where we've got clearly got the capital letters at the corners, we've got capital A, capital B, capital C. So if we mark in the lowercase letters, you'll see across from A, your lowercase letter A would go there. Lowercase letter B would be across from angle B and across from angle C would be lowercase letter C. So in order to use this formula, we need to know the, the side, uh, lowercase letter A, lowercase letter b so we'll put a tick there as well and we also need to to be able to work out the sine of capital c that means the angle c that means that we would need to know this angle in here so to be able to use if you look at this diagram to use this formula we needed to know two sides and they're joined together and the angle in between them so to be able to do a calculation and substitute in there, I would need to have values for these two sides and for this angle here. So this formula appears on the formula list. However, 
right? Depending on what two sides you're given, you might have to adapt the, for the formula to suit different lettering, for example. So this triangle here, if we knew this angle here, where the capital letter A is instead, then the two sides that you would be working with either side of that would be lowercase letter B, lowercase letter C. So your formula would become a half B, C, sine A. So don't get so much hung up on the, the lettering of, of this. It's more a case of think about this as knowing about two sides with the angle in between them. And that's what you're going to be substituting into the formula. And again, you could get a, a triangle like this, which has got capital P, Q, R at the corner. And so for this one, the, the formula that you would use to work out the area, the angle that you've got is Q. And the two sides, either side of that, are lowercase letter P, lowercase letter R. So that's why our formula is a half times P times R times sine. Q. So we're going to have a look at how to use this in practice. You'll need your notes to be able to fill this in. And this is on page 39 in your notes. So it's saying if two sides of a, if you know two sides of a triangle and the angle in between them, then you can find the area. You can, you don't have to, but you can draw the diagram and help yourself. Uh, work with this. When we introduce more formulae um, for the working out sides and things, it will be more important to put the, the letters on it. So here, I'm just going to, because we're uh, working with the most basic formula, I'm going to put letters on it. So I'm going to say I've got angle C at the top here, and I'm going to put capital letter A and B at the bottom. That would mean that the 7 was lowercase letter A, and the, the 10 was actually going to be side lowercase letter b and this of course is angle c that we have so what we would write down in this instance in order to work out the area of the triangle we would say area equals and i'll write the formula out because it's good practice to do that a half a b sine c all i've got to now do is put a half now we put this is all multiplied together, so a half times for the A, I'm putting in a 7, for the B, I'm putting in the 10. So that's the two sides that we've got multiplied together, and we've got this half at the front. And then we're doing sine of, and then you put the angle size. Now you do all that in the calculator, so use your fraction key to do your half, or you can put your half in as 0 0.5. And if you do all of that in the calculator, then it will come up as 34.6593, whole load of other figures. You will usually round that. So we're going to round to two decimal places. So 34.66, the, the 9 makes the 5 go up and it becomes 66. Six. This is A you're working out. So remember there's a change of units when you do area. It should be square units so we should have square centimetres when we do that. So that's the first example on your page. Here is another one. This time there are letters on the diagram and you can clearly see that the angle that you've got is angle R. If we use the lowercase letters to name our sides, the side across from angle Q will be lowercase q, cross from there will be lowercase p. So what we write down for our formula that we're going to do is we're going to do a half times these two sides that we've got, a half p, q, sine, capital R. So these are lowercase letters. This is the, the angle that you've got. So that's going to be a half times your side p is 12, your side Q is 14, and you're doing the sine of 54 degrees. And you do that calculation on the calculator, and it should come up with 67.9574, whole load of other digits, 
and we will round that to 67.96 square kilometres here because everything's in kilometres and that would be your answer. So now it's time for you to go and practice this. My suggestion is that you sketch the little triangle each time. You practice naming the, the sides with the lowercase letters and know how to identify and change the formula and substitute into it as you go along.